Uh, I think a short one today. Now we'd started working uh, in the last session, we'd worked on uh, getting concourse up and running, which it is. So uh, if I just have a quick look at this. Um, so docker container, container ls, and we're good to go. Uh, there's our concourse. Oh, let me take these off. Oh, I don't need those anymore. Ah, oh, I can hear myself think now. Okay. Um, now, over on the browser, uh, we should still be able to go to. Uh, now, where did I put it? That was on localhost. Uh, and it was. Uh, 8085? Sounds about right, no. 8085. Hmm, maybe not. Uh, oh, 8080. Uh, okay, but it, but it wasn't localized, was it? No, it wasn't. It was uh, 192.168.33.11. There we go, 8080. There we go. Okay, uh, right, so over on the browser, uh, we do actually have uh, now the 192.168.33.11.80.80, which is this, uh, uh, the browser interface to the uh, concourse that's running on a container on our virtual machine. Okay, so at the moment, it's just got the default which I think is test, and the password is test. There it is. So we've got no pipelines and we're all set up. Now we're not going to do anything fancy at the moment. We will eventually we'll get round to setting all of this stuff up properly. Uh, but this is proof of concept. All right. So uh, back on our sorry mate. Uh, so back on our uh, setup. Are you comfortable? Not looking me like that. Uh, so, what we can do now is we can start looking at the way uh, Concourse wants us to set things up. Now, I think I'd already logged into this. Uh, so, if I do fly, I think I said CI. Uh, let's go, I think, status? Yeah. Uh, ah, so it wants me to log in because the token's expired. Fair enough. So let's do login, user test, password test. There we go. So login successfully. Nice. Now we're, we're currently doing all this as a privileged user. We don't have to. Uh, fly, I think we installed Fly uh, over here so we can do it as a non privilege user, oops, minus user test. Uh, again, this is all quick and dirty at the moment. Uh, oops, flit. Fly. Uh, fly. Okay. Uh, unknown target CI. Okay, well, that's understandable because we've never logged in before. Oh, of course, I've got to give it the. Um, uh, HTTP colon slash slash one nine two dot one six eight dot thirty two because I've never logged into this one before here. Uh, I think I have to give it the eighty eight as well. Um, and there's something else. Is it minus s or something? Uh, uh, Ah, there we go. Uh, right, so we've got username. Oh, C, concourse URL. Okay. Oh, you're not helping, you know, Kenny. Go on then. Get down. Okay. Um, uh, and that's because uh, that should 
do over here. As you can see, exceptional expertise on my part for this. Right, okay, so we're looking good, 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 good. So now, uh, phi minus TCI status. And we're logging it. Okay, cool. So we can now use either of these interfaces. Uh, and I think, by and large, I want to stick to the non privileged. Not sure I need the privileged for most of what I'm about to do. Okay, so what do we have? Um, so we've got the uh, we've got a container which will allow us to run the patch command. We've got a container that we can run up uh, that has got SSH installed. Uh, uh, so we can we can do the SSH uh, from within the container. So all we need to do now is we need to set it up so that we've got inputs that can go into that container. Uh, on the one hand, with all of the scripts for configuring our machine, which can then be uploaded onto the uh, Raspberry Pi image and run to configure it. Uh, and on the other hand, we want to input a, a Raspberry Pi image. Uh, uh, ideally, we want to start with the one downloaded directly. Uh, we want to pass that in, patch it, then pass that patch version on to uh, to further customization. So uh, the first question is, how do we get uh, inputs? Uh, well, how do we set up a, a, a task uh, within Concourse? And the answer, of course, is you can do it through Fly. But all of the configuration within Concourse is done through the command line interface. Uh, sorry, through YAML. Uh, I mean, it is done through the command line interface, but it's gone through YAML files. Okay, so if we go back to the browser, uh, and you can see uh, starting up from the config basics, okay, uh, we can do everything with YAML. Uh, now, the thing that we're interested in uh, principally is uh, tasks, uh, tasks, and jobs uh, uh, are the two main things, okay. Um, but pipelines define uh, a whole string of uh, tasks that feed into each other. Uh, so let us uh, take a look at the basics. So we, we need a job, we need some resources, and we're going to need uh, some tasks. Okay, so here's their example. Uh, a job called Hello World uh, with a plan, uh, and the plan is a series of tasks. Okay, so the first task is to say hello. Uh, it runs on anything that uh, any worker which is defined for a Linux platform. Uh, it uses a Docker image, and that Docker image is, is simply Alpine, and it's just going to run the command echo uh, with these arguments. That's simple enough. Uh, so we, we, I mean, we can start that off straight away, uh, but we don't want to do that. Boring, chaining jobs together. So we can see we've got here a unit which chains onto a build. Okay, so what's going on there? So we can see that this booklet is passed from the unit job, uh, and it's triggered by if this thing changes, and this thing. Uh, is to get booklet, which is this resource, which is just a git repository. Uh, and so when this changes, this is triggered, and this does a run unit, uh, which is the name of the task, and it runs this file, okay, which is a test YAML. Hmm. Okay, so that's obviously an externally defined piece of YAML. Okay, I can live with that. Uh, and the same goes here for build. Uh, it gets the booklet, which is again this. Uh, uh, trigger true past unit. Hmm. Uh, What's the step? Uh, 
Ah, get step past. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is. Uh, ah, right. Okay. So basically, what it's saying is, if this unit test, as defined here, passes, then that's what triggers uh, the running of this. Which is good. Oh, sorry. Was I disturbing you? Okay. Okay. So we've got some stuff to work on. So. Uh, we can actually use this kind of setup then, can't we? Because we want the uh, the patch to run, and only if the patch passes for it to then trigger the next step. Okay, so what triggers the what triggers the patching? Uh, it will be a change in the image, and the image is basically uh, obtained from a curl command, and that curl points the latest, and we expect it to be redirected. Okay, so uh, what we need is a resource uh, similar to this, except instead of being git, it just wants to be a resource from a URL. Okay, so resource types. Uh, now, is there anything in here that looks like it might do the job? Uh, and I'm going to say probably not. Uh, I don't know. There's lots of good stuff we can use later. Uh, I can get stuff from Google Cloud repositories or various different repositories. I mean, we could get it directly from GitHub, I suppose, but that would then mean I was loading it into GitHub. HTTP JQ exposed version of resources over an HTTP endpoint and parses it via JQ into concourse jobs. Okay, so we'll put that and see what that's offering. Uh, uh, so it's just Okay, so this is exactly what you'd expect. It's looking for some sort of JSON information, uh, which we don't have. Uh, okay, uh, go back to resource types. Uh, Internet Relay Chat, Key Value, LastPass, Marathon, Maven, Mock. Uh, R clone. That's for publishing, so it's a resource for outputting. Uh, does it have any facilities for getting stuff in? He wondered. Uh, <coughs> no. Yeah, that <clears throat> there are these three behaviors that are defined check in and out uh, and we need a check and an in so the check should look at the actual URL not the not the latest URL but the one it redirects to and we want it to store that and if that ever changes then that would trigger our build uh, I guess an in where it is just a simple curl to download the latest copy uh, and there's no out in this case so out, out would be a no uh, oh the point being that our clone won't do the business right uh, we've got registry images uh, we can get stuff from an s3 bucket but let's this isn't an S3 bucket, it's just a URL. Uh, a resource to expose static information as a directory. Right. Hmm. 
that's just so we can pass values around. Okay. By effectively by converting them into files and directories. Um, Terraform time tracker. So it looks like the answer is no. However, we can write our own. Uh, as I understand it, uh, we can write our own resource types. Uh, um, a There's a resource type catalog. I thought we'd just been implementing a resource type. Here we go. So all we need to do is implement these three scripts in op resources within a container. Uh, okay. And the information uh, from the configuration file is passed in as a simple JSON structure. Uh, and the version is okay. So how does it remember the version then? So the check script invokes and detects a new version. It is given the configured source and current version on standard input, and then we must print the array of new versions in chronological order to standard out, including the requested version if it is still valid. Well, ours will only have one. Come on. Oh, come on then. Hey. Uh, okay, so uh, so it looks like we're going to need to write a resource type, which is basically going to get our. Because if you remember, the problem is uh, if we go back to the yeah, when we do our curl. Excuse me. Okay, so when we do our curl, uh, uh, if we don't do this minus L, okay, what we actually get back is the 302 redirect. And that's great because it means that we can always just hit this latest uh, URL uh, as, a, as a sort of constant. So we can just hit that. <coughs> And we can get uh, the redirect as being the real version. So if we just do that as a demo. Mm. Uh, Control N. There we go. So we'll get rid of that. Okay, so I might just do that. Okay, you can see here we get this 302, and it's this URL, which is the interesting bit. Now then, uh, I'm, I'm uh, if we do man curl, because again, I don't do this often enough to remember it. But what we want to do is get the header values. Uh, so we want, in fact, we really what we want is we, the only thing we want is the header value. D uh, is uh, to send data. Because uh, mm -hmm. H capital H extra header to include in the request. Mm, not quite what I didn't mind. Ah, fetch the header only minus I. So let's have a look what we get if we do that. Okay, so if we go, um, you're not making this easy, mate. I realise it's not your job. Uh, 
So we do minus capital I. Ah, here we go, that's what we want. So what we're looking for is this location. Uh, and that will effectively become our version ID. Uh, it'd be nice if we could put a pattern thing in to recognize the actual pattern, but nah, for now, just the HD, just the URL. Uh, uh, so we know that we're going to get this 302. And all we're looking for is its location, which is, if you like, the, uh, the new location, the new location of the latest version. Okay, uh, so if I can get that, uh, so if I just pipe that in, I'm going to push that into a uh, text drop for a minute. Okay, and we just do cat text. Uh, so it is literally just that text. Uh, uh, it's obviously been prettified as part of the curl output, but if we just redirect it standard input all we're looking for is location colon and then the actual value I suppose it would be a good idea to confirm that we're getting a 302 first uh, if I'm being lazy maybe not okay so the check script will hit the URL as provided in the source configuration it'll get the redirect compare it to the existing version if they're the same then it can just return that value which is essentially unchanged isn't it uh, uh, and does that uh, the list may be empty if there are no versions available uh, if the given version is already the latest an array with that version as the sole entry should be listed right okay so that's that's straightforward enough isn't it okay now does that mean that we can just literally return the URI. I think it does. And we just assume, we'll assume that if it's changed, we don't even need to do that, do we? The check just needs to refer, re return the array with the URI of the new location. Uh, if it's changed, then we rely on concourse figuring it out. Nice. And then all we need to do is write the in, which is that it downloads the the new zip file. Do we, do we want it to? Yeah, we want it to get the zip and unpack it basically, so we've got the image. Uh, and what does it do? It just takes that. And what is it, uh, it fetches the resources and place it in the given directory okay so it, the given directory being dollar one okay that's simple enough okay I mean we could download both the zip uh, and then the unpacked or we could download the zip into a temporary directory and then unpack it Hmm. Okay, so we've got two steps. Let's um, just make some notes. Uh, uh, mm, oh, have I got that open somewhere else? Uh, let's do the recovery. I don't think it's opened anywhere else. Right, okay, so let's just uh, get rid of the... Uh, um, get rid of that. Okay, so we're going to. Um, so this is the concourse. Let's call it the URI resource. Uh, okay, so we need the three things. So we need opt. Uh, 
Think we need to knock resource out because we're, not, we're never going to write anything out. But we'll just make a note that opt resource out uh, is simply a double. Uh, okay. Now in this one, so in opt resource check. The basic steps are uh, essentially doing a curl minus i on the source uh, yeah, source dot um, uri, which is just just the, uh, the source uri within the uh, input data. Then we do two, which is uh, we just output the location from the header. Now that, that is all we need to do. And then for the input, we do a curl with the minus L of the uh, source. URI uh, uh, and we don't do that into dollar one, we'll do that into some temp uh, temp directory. Okay, and then to we have to unzip. X, Y, Z, uh, whatever, into what on earth are you doing, Mark? Uh, into and that will go into dollar one. Okay, which should have given us the image file then in dollar one. Okay, I'm not going to say that's a no op, so that's not it. So, in actual fact, it's quite a simple little beast, isn't it? Uh, so, that shouldn't be too difficult to write. And we need to put that into uh, a minimal image, so it needs to support curl and it needs to support unzip. So, probably an alpine or a busy box will suffice. I think both will support those. Right. And the only tricky bit is getting this location value. I mean we can do a lot uh, we can do a lot more because for example uh, we could uh, the we could check that we're getting a proper 302, for example. But for a proof of concept, this will do just fine. Uh, yeah. So we need to write those little scripts. Now the other thing we're going to need is a way of processing the input JSON. And the quickest and easiest way is to use JQ. Okay, so we can have uh, JQ to extract. Data. So we need to install JQ into whatever image. So again, we need that to be supported. Uh, uh, and really, the only thing we need to get is the source URI. So the 
the source definition will be in the source So we've got the URI, which will be HTTP, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Mm. Do we need anything else in our source definition? Not really. Well, not, not for this version, anyway. Mm. And the version is just going to be a single string in an array, of course. Uh, so, and we don't really care about the input version because we're literally just going to write that one single value out and we're going to leave concourse to sort it out. Okay. So that's the design. So, okay, so once that's done, that's our resource which will allow us then to feed into our patch uh, image which of course will be running as a container uh, that will then produce so that's got to do two steps it's got to copy the input into some safe location then apply the patch to it then we take that and we feed that into, uh, I mean, the copy, the copy is not strictly necessary, but it's nice because it means that we're not then modifying the input. Uh, so we, we take that, we feed that into uh, the next task, which is the actual customization. And that will use the Git resource we've already seen. Uh, to get the scripts which are going to customize the pi image okay so we've got a plan of action uh, and i think that that will do for today because i've got a little dog fidgeting here uh, and it's your lunch time isn't it? it's time for you to eat and i'll take you for a walk and we'll try and do more later or tomorrow. Mm. What do you think? It's very difficult to do anything with your head on my arm, you know. Yes. Right. Okay, short one today. <laughs>